and we're live. Hello, everybody. Hello, Lisa. Hey, Josh. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Dark Ozarks. It's Wednesday night. Uh, it we is. Running just a few minutes late, but that's okay. Oh, uh, we did some interesting uh, tech issues to work through. <clears throat> but <laughs> it happens. <clears throat> It, it really does. And, you know, we've been doing this now over two years. Mm -hmm. And I think at one point or another, everything that could go wrong has uh, at, at various times. And you know what? It's just part of it. And it really is. It's, <laughs> uh, I, in, <clears throat> you know, if I could give, give anybody a free advice, and I hate to do this, but um, maybe I won't. Um, you know, is, is don't sweat the, the small stuff, just care about what you do, create content and just keep going. And if you love what you're creating, you won't mind creating it for those long periods of time when you feel like you're talking to no one. And, <laughs> and then after a while, if, if, you know, you're fortunate enough to have content that is that folks really like, things happen and they happen very organically. Mm -hmm. over not weeks no uh, but quarters and months and years and you know i just a huge shout out to all of our followers here on facebook for joining us on this journey of dark ozarks simply at the very least <clears throat> you have no idea how gratifying it is for us that so many people find the things that we love to be interesting exactly it, it it really it really is uh gratifying and humbling so mm -hmm. and it, we we should do a shout out to our sponsor oh my gosh yes <laughs> <laughs> i i cannot oh my my prop yes i'm looking for my prop it's not a prop well no it's not a prop at all and <clears throat> we have proof that it's not a prop because I've been reading it, which means it's moved out of range for me to pick there up. <clears throat> oh, yes. I'll let you intro on our Joplin sponsor, which is really a perfect fit for Dark Ozarks and us personally. It really is. Um, we are very thankful uh, to our sponsor, Always Buying Boots, um, based in Joplin, Missouri. Um, wonderful uh, brick and mortar store. Um, they also uh, have an internet presence uh, uh, website of the same name. Uh, and you can also view a lot of their inventory on Facebook on their page, Always Buying Books. Um, yes. And we encourage you that if you shop with them, whether in person or uh, virtually, let them know that Dark Ozarks sent you their way. Absolutely. And, you know, and it, there's, and, and for the record, I've, pardon me, I have engaged on the virtual side. Mm -hmm. I've not actually been to the location. I have books from the location. That is thanks to you. <laughs> <coughs> and <clears throat> I've had the opportunity to begin following and seeing the kind of collections that they are able to get a hold of and and provided the public and it's incredible <clears throat> also fantastic stop for route 66 goers mm -hmm. uh, and to me i don't know about anybody else but to me nothing is sounds like more fun than a than a traditional route 66 road trip that includes uh esoteric books and more <clears throat> that uh, i think sounds absolutely fantastic and then lastly uh you know and this is just probably me but <clears throat> it's not just probably me um is uh you know letting me loose in this bookstore with a credit card and access to the esoteric book section <laughs> is going to be more than a little dangerous when i get there so i'm saving money now <laughs> <laughs> we will get you there soon and we and invite everyone else to check it out. So. Yeah, yes. Um, for, for anybody that says to Josh, why is Josh coughing all the time? Um, you all just get to join me in my 
ongoing battle with uh, with Ozark Pollen. While we talk about several battles of the Civil War, I thought I'd throw that segue in there like that. <laughs> <laughs> and now when I laugh, I cough. Um, and then uh, talk about the, I, I think this is really our opportunity to talk in depth about what happened on Saturday and honestly, how ridiculously awesome it was. Oh, it was, wasn't it? It was a fantastic event. We we had a, a tour and um, ghost hunt at the Ritchie Mansion in Newtonia, Missouri. Uh, well, actually, we were, we were in three locations. We the yeah. community center, then the mansion, and the Civil War Cemetery. And we had a huge crowd, almost 100 people. Um, and and just a great crowd everyone oh. had a good time we had a lot of good questions a lot of good interaction and we've had some fantastic feedback um on the page uh, since then and we really thank everybody because oh you helped support the house and yes um they they were very humbled with with oh. the proceeds i'm and i'm thrilled <clears throat> Being able to mm, <clears throat> conduct events that have meaningful and measurable contribution yes. to the preservation and the awareness of historic sites is one of the most important things that I believe any of us can do. Mm -hmm. and I agree. To me, it is just, it is being able to even be there, let alone <clears throat> be a, a part of the event with you all was incredible and, and also very humbling. And it made me just immensely grateful to be able to be a part of all of this. Me too. And, and a, a big shout out to uh, Jim Ridenauer, who is the caretaker of the house. Uh, Tom Hidden, who's in charge of the Preservation Society, uh, and everyone else who helped out. Um, it was just fantastic. And a shout out to um, everyone that came out, and friends of ours that came out. And we had people that came for, drove for over two hours from multiple directions. Yes, <laughs> yes. <clears throat> and <clears throat> obviously, I think that there's... <clears throat> on the whatever plane it is that one goes to uh, after death, there's, there's a certain amount of activity that is, I think, often rather oblivious to us and what we're doing. Yes. But there was definitely, I definitely got a sense that there was, and we'll talk about this in depth along with my personal disclaimers, uh, but there was to me there was a very strong sense of awareness by a, a certain amount of energy pretty mm -hmm. sizable amount of energy both in both locations the the Ritchie mansion and uh and the cemetery and mm -hmm. certainly with the mansion I might go so far as to say uh a grudging sense of appreciation for the life that was being brought back into the mansion again. And I, my disclaimer on that also <clears throat> is that the Preservation Society has done an extraordinary job of bringing life into the mansion. I'm not saying that, that but uh, an event, uh, uh, an occurrence that has all of these people coming and going and loving the house, mm -hmm seemed incredibly positive to me it, it it really did to me too and 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 there were some uh uh some experiences we we've had people asking you know what happened and can they see what we did yeah. that night mm -hmm. um you know uh we we did not live stream the event because you know it was to benefit the people who, you know, came out. Uh, yes. We might have 
some surprises a little further down the line with showing things there, though. Yes. Uh, so stay tuned <laughs> on that part. Um, but uh, as far as uh, experiences, we, we had multiple people have some experiences. Uh, we had a um, couple of people who uh, had a strong reaction to the Black Room. Um, yeah. And actually had to leave the room, mm -hmm. uh, feeling nauseous and um, uh, overwhelmed, um, as well as people having a sense of uh, a presence uh, 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 on the landing and in the uh, upper porch. Yes, yes. And one of which those is people consistent with other uh, reports <laughs> in the past. Yeah. One, one of those people, just for full disclosure, was me yeah well actually me as well <laughs> and so. you, yes and uh, and a shout out to josh huxtable who was a yeah. hard-working volunteer at the yeah. throughout the event and uh, appreciate josh very very yeah. much <laughs> very very much and and we'll get into that i <laughs> talking about the uh the response that some people had in the black room that i, I was I was going, my hat's off to the four with all of, of uh, folks who came out. And I saw, I saw the comment as well. And, and uh, the sense that, you know, it came out, mm, had such a sense of, of presence and uh, overwhelming sense of nausea that I had to leave one of the rooms. Mm -hmm. And the event was great and I loved it and I was glad I did it. Yes. <laughs> and, and they want to come again. So. And they want to again. Yes. And thank you guys for that. It's, uh, it, it, to me, it really dovetails closely into something that we talk about a lot. And I had the opportunity to talk to, to, to three groups <clears throat> um, through the process. Well, two groups. <laughs> I was, it was going to be three. My voice wasn't entirely up to it on the first one. <laughs> um, it happens. But <clears throat> the, the importance, and it, uh, again, I think if you're not in it, it's diff sometimes difficult to wrap your head around this, but the importance of normalcy with the paranormal. Yes. Uh, in, in Which so is many kind cases, of surprising to a lot of people, too, for you to say that. Yes. And... <clears throat> And we even got some really good feedback in our portion of the evening with uh, feedback that I really appreciated in, in terms of uh, folks coming with an anticipation of something scary yeah. happening. <clears throat> um, or, or the comment, which again, I really appreciate it. I'm glad that, I'm super glad that we had a chance to talk about it um the idea of <clears throat> dark figures or shadow figures mm -hmm. and the question being isn't that always demonic no it's not very rarely very rarely is it demonic and <clears throat> bringing these things because between individuals sometimes personal experiences which without anybody to talk to can be very unsettling mm -hmm. if uh <clears throat> if you're you know having having experiences or then you turn to pop culture and get the crap scared out of you mm -hmm. um you know everything i needed to know in paranormal studies and research i learned from you know the exorcist and the polter and poltergeist <laughs> and or I, ironic yes. yeah. what what's that and in and, and certain tv shows <laughs> mm -hmm. and you know and and <clears throat> i have created and certainly are continuing to create my own uh you know pain piano fiction mm -hmm. <clears throat> Uh, hashtag plague child's doctor available for amazon for 14.99 uh <laughs> it's <a> great read <laughs> thank you uh but 
not being, you know, I think, I think the American public and not just America, I think the public is not mm, well positioned to know how to react yeah. to the paranormal because either it hasn't happened to you and in that case, most people are like, yeah, fine, whatever, y'all crazy. And then it has, for those that it has happened to you, <clears throat> it can be an extraordinarily unsettling experience. And most of the, <clears throat> because I, I think because uh, more traditional platforms uh, are unwilling to tackle the subject. Yeah then you know where where do you turn well you turn to pop culture you turn to movies and tv shows <clears throat> many of which have a modicum of truth attached to them but traditional media is so um so all-encompassing we we trust it to the point that we don't have a filter to say for example, this really scary moment happened because they need you to sit through the next three commercials. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing is that um, our suspension of uh, disbelief goes to the point that we just believe and accept whatever view is given um, in these purported yeah. reality shows. And yeah. Uh, that's certainly not always the case, and it certainly is. Um, you you you, ha you have to filter it through the lens of what they have to do to put on a show, what they feel has to be done to garner an audience and keep an audience, mm -hmm. uh, and so it's kind of they have to have quote quote results. Uh, yes. And that's not reality. <clears throat> no. And, <clears throat> and I think it's also very important whether we're dealing with <clears throat> um, fiction pieces or fiction pieces based on real life events. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. The, the ones that really come to mind that have <clears throat> what I classify as... Uh, seismic impact on culture mm -hmm. would be the exorcist yeah um possibly rosemary's baby a little bit yeah for for a lot um, of people um poltergeist poltergeist um A amityville amityville the conjuring movies um yeah I'm trying to think if there's, I'm, I'm thinking like between Poltergeist, this is our movie review section of the show, folks, um, between, <coughs> and we really are pretty much off the cuff, so I have no notes, but um, between say like Poltergeist, and I've only seen Poltergeist once, I'm going to buy it on Amazon, or buy it anyway, and I really want to watch it again. My problem now in rewatching it is all I'm going to see is Coach. And, and be like, wait, this isn't a sitcom. Um, but that's oh, I, I think yeah, I, that that is one thing. It it stands up pretty well. Um, we we showed it with the cinema uh, at the mm. Opera House last year, and it actually holds up pretty good. Um, I, I I remember seeing it when I was much younger and having it scare the crap out of me. Well, yeah, there there's certainly you know. Um, the, those aspects to it and it, it, it's so well done that there's certain aspects of it that do kind of haunt our pop, pop culture the 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 preacher um this the the swimming pool scene is is something that you know um is just you, you know stuck in your head etc um but you know, ironically, um, probably the most iconic scene, though, is with the TV, with the white noise and the little girls. 
here. Yeah. Um, and that that aspect of it ha has a little more uh, parallel with you know actual investigation than yes. any rest of it. Um, uh, and um, and it has been built on and used in good and bad ways um, by pop culture since. But yes, <laughs> uh, something I love about Poltergeist a lot <clears throat> is the awareness that it built <clears throat> um, perhaps a bit gratuitously, but the awareness that building wholesale over the top of uh, of traditional grave sites is not a good idea yes and that it does happen um yes and and certainly not and not necessarily as um dramatically as as portrayed in that movie obviously but it it's something that really has happened throughout american history um yeah. not uncommon and for cemeteries to to basically be reused and not always move the bodies yes and and sometimes <clears throat> that type of activity does appear to initiate a lot of another type of activity specifically paranormal it does i've i've investigated um multiple places um surrounding that exact situation in southwest missouri uh, involving <clears throat> a very early cemetery that was 40 acres that is now all commercial uh property and you can you can eat your hamburger and Mexican food and everything else on it um, and not know it, um, as well as apartments and houses, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And um, it definitely seems to be um, a factor in what happens in some of those locations. <laughs> yes. And, <clears throat> you know, and I think the, the big kicker in so many situations <clears throat> is not to tread fearfully but to tread respectfully yes yes um and and i think for the most part most most people do or try to um mm -hmm. uh, pop culture loves to use those tropes of not doing that and oh because it you know it has built-in drama that way it does it... <laughs> <clears throat> i was trying to think is are there any films that come to mind, say, like between Poltergeist and the beginning of the Conjuring series that seem to really have gotten into public consciousness? Because I'm not. I think I think the one that did that I never really got was Blair Witch Project. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I was yeah. like, really? <laughs> yes. A lot of people um, were really freaked out by that. but Yes. I agree. I agree. But I knew there was there was something else in there. You have that. I mean, you have. Um, I mean, you have the Ghostbuster movies, uh, which are done as comedies, but ironically, they were written based on um, actual uh, ghost hunting uh, practices, and um, Dan Aykroyd's family. It, spiritualists and ghost hunters for over 100 years and so although it was done as a comedy it was based in those practices so um if you take out the the comedy aspect of the exaggeration aspect that there's a bit a bit of truth in what you see you know so yes uh, but really, i, but I love don't that. take that as scary right take those things as scary but Which is, it kind of comes back to what you were saying is that it's more normalizing that the paranormal is not always scary. No, um, and not, not everything is something to be frightened of, but it is something to respect. Yes. Actually, another one that actually in some ways gets, gets part of it right is Beetlejuice. Yes. And, you know, surprisingly. Agreed. Agreed. <coughs> um, yeah. In, in particular, uh, the Winona Ryder uh, line where she says that uh, the living often ignore the dead. 
uh, I think that's pretty apropos. Yes, I, I do. My gosh, I'm going to watch that again now. I, um, <laughs> I love Beetlejuice. shoots. <laughs> I do too. <clears throat> Fantastic cast. One of my favorite Tim Burton films. Mm-hmm. And in that, I think that is a really great segue to talk about the the whole location and night. <clears throat> Too often, the the living do ignore the the dead. Mm-hmm. We walked out of the community center. So, quick disclaimer on my part: uh, I leave the most of the equipment aspect of things up to you guys. Yeah, and. So some of that is for a reason, you know, in the sense <clears throat> that my background is predominantly journalism. And one of the things I'm, I am particularly interested in, in regards to my personal heritage, <clears throat> which is, you know, has a lot of, of Celtic and Anglo-Saxon uh, ancestry, <clears throat> is really learning and then trying as a journalist observing what i'm learning Mm -hmm. in terms of seeing what my uh sensitivity will actually show or not right and then objectively documenting that looking at that just to see and really not trying to make a judgment call one way or the other uh not trying and and not trying to be like oh my gosh oh my gosh i want to see a ghost that's not what this is about but simply placing myself into a space and seeing what what does the space tell me and what are what am i able to pick up and what am i not Mm -hmm. And so many times layers, what I would classify as subconscious layers of the rational mind block what is around us. Yeah, we filter out a lot and um, and and, and consciously and subconsciously make uh, assumptions. Oh, the classic, oh, that's (laughs) house settling. (laughs) That's not footsteps (laughs) or something like that. And something I'm particularly interested in, so I'm just going to throw this out here for sort of our larger discussion, Mm -hmm. is that, like, in terms of of things that we block out, I understand, you know, I've understood for a long time, the idea that you go, you know, that you, oh, did I hear a creaking sound in the other room? Oh, it was just the wind. <clears throat> at the point where it is the information that we're receiving has reached the point where we're making thought level decisions right i thought i heard something <clears throat> oh i must not have or i thought i saw something but it was probably just my imagination or those types of things what i'm increasingly interested in is the the gatekeeping that our mind does before that on a on on a very literal subconscious level and for me at the moment it is putting myself into a situation experiencing and then pulling myself out and letting those subconscious gates essentially <clears throat> begin to erode over the next say five days and see what my memory tells me mm-hmm. what what did i sense in this space what do i remember about this space and as those uh what appear to be subconscious or uncontrollable uh gates begin to erode and i think that they erode because my brain is then busy being rational on something else Mm -hmm. because it doesn't seem to be guarding memories it seems to be guarding experiences and then looking back and saying okay what 
what do you, what did you feel? What do you, and, and I get some really interesting takes on that. That is my rather lengthy discourse <clears throat> on something that is difficult to, not difficult for me to talk about, but it's difficult, I think, for us culturally to talk about mm -hmm. <clears throat> because really, I think because of something else that I had the opportunity to, you know, for us to discuss in group <clears throat> which is the issue of trust yes yes that <clears throat> we and this this falls in really across the board whether it's crypto cryptozoology or ufology I didn't a lot of people didn't know that that's a word now uh <laughs> ufology i really like saying it almost as much as i like saying um hamlet um but <clears throat> <clears throat> coffee um but the the other side so this is my rather laborious conversation leading up to this <clears throat> but you you know it could be cryptozoology it could be ufology it could be uh paranormal mm -hmm. it could be uh spiritualism or mediumship mm -hmm. it could be uh tarot uh, it could be a lot of things. And we don't have uh, a process, a specific process, a specific <clears throat> peer reviewed third party process <laughs> <clears throat> to say this person is making it up and it's full of crap. Yeah. And this person has had a genuine experience. And this other person is Fruit Loops. And <clears throat> and so you know there is no trust structure yeah when someone says this is my this is my feeling this is my impression mm -hmm. this is what i think about this space you, you have to build that person by person um yeah. and again yeah there, there there there's just no set of just objective variables to say okay <laughs> this one's okay this one's not um, yeah and so the human mind has to be a part of that anyway uh, and it's the human mind that is you know running in the background going eh, doing you know all of this while you're not aware of that and so you filter out something and so what do you trust and what are you even filtering and it, it can go on ad nauseum it, it can and so you know what i <clears throat> you know for folks who are watching which i'm very grateful for mm -hmm. and deeply appreciate that i i cannot ask you know on any of my impressions i cannot ask someone to just believe it and i'm not going to ask someone to just believe it I can share the experiences that I appear to, I believe that I have had. Mm -hmm. And I can encourage people to contemplate on these ideas and see what your own experiences are while doing your best to <clears throat> take, you know, reasonable and logical assessments mm -hmm because if you're getting a lot of activity <clears throat> and it's very unsettling you also need to take a lot of other factors into consideration and <clears throat> even things as simple as how much sleep have you gotten or <clears throat> you know have you, eaten or... have you eaten is your blood sugar doing okay um has has your physician changed your medications recently <clears throat> um just lots and lots of factors because there there are a wide number of variables but i am really grateful for the opportunity certainly for myself to be able to you know talk about this this process for myself uh and then get to share and have others encourage others to share mm -hmm. their experiences and bring some normalcy to this but at the end of the day <clears throat> um 
you know, and it's, I was, I was, uh, I was listening, imagine that, I was listening to a podcast about Bigfoot, um, <laughs> and <clears throat> the, a lot of the conversation heavily revolved around the contentiousness that can occur within the community, yeah. and, and the, the, the difficulty, uh, one of the, one of the guys was talking about that, uh, somebody had uh, had called him out to their semi-rural farm because mm-hmm. just quote unquote a lot of weird stuff was happening <clears throat> he went out he went out by himself so there wasn't somebody with him but he was just like this guy called it was late <clears throat> this guy called and uh, i go yeah and again it was late um and he said that there were they were hearing lots of just mm, atypical sounds in the adjoining woodlots, mm-hmm. and, and then it's like, did you get a recording? <coughs> I left my phone in the truck, uh, <laughs> and again, it was you know, jump out of the truck. This guy says, "Hey, come here, listen to this before it stops." that kind of thing <clears throat> and then that led to a discussion first of all the difficulty of gathering evidence but also led to a discussion he said what would happen the the interviewer the the, the guy the host yeah. he said what would happen if you know after all the stuff that you've done after all the filming after all the the work that you've done and all the engagement within the the community what would you do if you got video evidence Mm -hmm. and he said i can tell you what i do i would put it online and everybody would say that i faked it (laughs) yeah and you know and it's it's you know it's it's interesting to me one thing that i've noticed over time is that so much of the photographic and video evidence that gets put online that people buy into the most often are is the most obvious that it's not what they think it is yes and <clears throat> the the sense that almost anything can be <clears throat> artificially created on film at this point or for, or on photograph <clears throat> really makes it you know we're in terms of engaging in media, we're largely living in uh, a world of artifice. I mean, we really are. I mean, if you, I mean, if you really want to make the argument, you could argue that we pretty well are living in in a hologram with our with our inundation of uh, media of all forms. Um, yes, and and that it can be manipulated so many ways that. Um, and increasingly very convincingly um, that at what point do you trust anything, you know? Uh, yes. It, it comes down to trust. Um, mm-hmm. And we, we, it starts out from a standpoint of don't trust your mind because the mind can be tricked, the, the eyes can be tricked. Uh, your faulty hearing, et cetera. So we want something, quote, empirical, you know, something captured. Um, but now we, we're to a point that that can be manipulated so much that that can't be trusted, quote, unquote. So now it's it's almost a full circle back to you have to trust yourself more than anything. Yes, and, and trust a not someone else's first person experience but at the end of the day to trust your personal experience and learn to think critically and apply those critical skills to that experience um preferably with as um little negative excitement or positive excitement as possible objectivity and just observational skills yes and 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 unfortunately most people are not very good at that (laughs) 
I'm great. Now let me turn back to my watching of Poltergeist. Um, they, <laughs> I'm teasing. Uh, <clears throat> all that is a preface, and we'll, we'll also talk about the history of Newtonia as well, but all of that is a preface stepping out of the community center, preparing to go. And of course the lights are on in the mansion across the street. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> it is a, a somewhat tumultuous evening of, of weather. Uh, fortunately it did not rain on us, uh, but there was a lot of, of, uh, of moving weather after yeah. a lot of, of wind all day. And a little, you know, few raindrops here and there. <clears throat> and stepping out I was very heavily struck by the impression of a of an awareness in regards to the house of a a waiting uh, mm -hmm. a sense of anticipation anticipation <clears throat> that is how the house struck me mm -hmm. it was it felt to me both oh, for lack of a better terminology and sometimes it, it fails me um, like there was a glowing ball of energy inside the house that was pulsing mm -hmm. um, and that it was waiting but it wasn't sure what it was waiting for going <clears throat> we hope this is going to be good but we're not sure and we're right. waiting to see. And I can't help but think a little bit <clears throat> that many of the folks who either have, you know, reside in the mansion or have chosen perhaps to seek shelter in the mansion mm -hmm. after death, you know, there, there was a point that <clears throat> there was a, you know, large masses of people moving across the yard and they weren't there for a tour. Right. That's true. I mean, you don't, you don't know if it's, you know, how much of almost a triggering experience that is of uh, evoking um, the battles uh, yes. just because of the large number of people and just, you know, people were excited and um, th there was a, a lot of energy in the air just from everyone their own anticipation and so yeah you do have to wonder um if that was a, a part of it for the uh for the residents there um you're like oh no <laughs> here come here they come again almost um yeah if i you know again i'm, I'm doing my best to try to remain objective <clears throat> but then it gets just give those impressions what was it that i was feeling how did it feel <clears throat> and letting the my my rational subconscious erode a little bit mm -hmm. on the on the gates yeah. you know when you get around a, a dog that has been hit mm -hmm. and the dog really likes people and wants to be petted, wants to engage, but is also <laughs> like waiting for the blow. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, me, that's kind of a fair that, estimation, I think. And and I'm not I'm not saying that every <clears throat> sentience within the house was thinking that, but there no. was just a a a energetic sense of anticipation but it <clears throat> it was unsure is of, what this was be, of what what is coming what is coming yeah. although as the evening went on that seemed to brighten it did it, it seemed to um to to lift and be airier and to be mm -hmm. lighter and <clears throat> that that would certainly be my my very first <clears throat> impression and that struck me when we stepped out of the community center wow it you know um to me it was almost like I, 
that description is fairly fair, but for me too, it was just uh, almost as we were walking down the the street towards the house, almost feeling like you're walking uh, backwards in time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, like like years rolling, you know, rolling back. And yes, uh, and uh, it it to me it had. The, the feeling of the warmth of a family home all mixed up with the um, tensions and anxiety and fears, et cetera, during the battles. And of course it was used as a field hospital too. Um, that all of those things seem to be going on at once where sometimes a, a place will be more heavily one way or the other but it seemed like there would be it was all together i think that's i think that's very very fair <clears throat> i i had a thought as you were saying that and it's something i've not contemplated before but we tend to get stuck in such a linear interpretation mm -hmm. when it comes to paranormal so <clears throat> the the Ritchie mansion was uh, essentially taken over as a field hospital mm -hmm. and for people who uh who don't know uh, there were two <clears throat> comparatively small but significant battles that took place uh the first battle of newtonia mm -hmm. uh, took place on uh, september 30th of 1862 Mm -hmm. And the second battle of Newtonia took place on October 28th of 1864, two years later. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and between the two battles, there was uh, combined casualties of over 900 people, which for mm, the heartlessness of the larger war narrative, that was like a drop in the bucket skirmish. Mm -hmm. uh, until you realize just how heartless would become in terms of that war narrative <clears throat> and and then and then you stop and think that all of those casualties and those injured were all you know most of them treated in the richie's bedroom <clears throat> yes and <clears throat> the idea that <clears throat> We, we understand that there are sentient spirits that choose to remain or, or appear to remain for a variety of reasons within a space. Mm -hmm. And then we also understand that there are at times echoes or repetition events mm -hmm. on a semi-spiritual realm. So, and, and how that translates out to people who are actually experiencing things <clears throat> they in some cases they could see sort of the the same activity happening over and over right uh or they could have activity in the house that shifts and reacts to them yes more more <clears throat> interactive and we seem to be under the impression. So here's here's where my brain is going with this. And I literally have not thought about this whatsoever until right now. Okay. <clears throat> is let's say there was a you know civil war surgery going okay. on, and the person on the table dies mm -hmm. from from the surgery, and so part of the paranormal um activity that's reported is for example seeing you know uh seeing the surgery or seeing people surrounding the space within the surgery but it's the same thing over and over right. we arrive at the conclusion <clears throat> that that it, somehow they're caught in some sort of like even the spirit itself the person's soul is somehow caught in a feedback loop and they're stuck reliving this experience over and over um contemplating because once you are no longer corporeal time is no longer an issue right or, or at least it's experienced differently 
Yes, and uh, and space also seems to be experienced Different. differently. Yeah. <clears throat> the possibility, so this is just where I'm going. I have no idea what I'm talking about. Full disclaimer, it just popped into my head. <clears throat> that, let's say that you're a soldier in the battle. Mm -hmm. You've been severely wounded. You're taken into the house. You're taken to the operating room. They operate on you. It the extreme emotions and energetic release of that creates a type of vortex that begins a repetition cycle. Mm -hmm. I think that's possible. Uh, at the same time, that that pattern that is created is separate from the soldier's sentient energy. Right. Who could also be haunting the house at the same time, but in a different way. I, I think that's possible. I mean, I, I really do. And, and um makes me think of that there are locations where you will have, I mean, certainly you have uh, presences that are over time are viewed differently, different things happen, um, which lends to the idea it has to be intelligent, interactive, because it's different. But then at the same time, often part of that is, a piece of it is the same thing happening, you know, one yeah. particular thing happening, but also other things. So, you know, I, I, I do think that part of it could be sort of an imprint that something is observed, you know, over time repeatedly, that's an imprint of energy, but you could have uh, an intelligent haunting of the same person. It's now, now here, here's the thought is what happens when he went if if that can happen the intelligent portion of the haunting views the <laughs> residual <laughs> talking about the ultimate uh doppelganger i know and of course if you if you got to if you got to see it enough times at some point you might just go look yeah. i'm back yeah <laughs> <laughs> just kind of like walking in front of a mirror <laughs> yeah, exactly. didn't didn't really need to remember that day in my life uh, but, yeah, really. uh, okay. Why that <laughs> um but i do think that there's there are very strong impression that there's a number of sentient hauntings associated with the Ritchie Mansion. Um, no indication I've seen or heard thus far is that any of them are particularly angry or dark or malevolent. <clears throat> and another thing that I think pop culture has perpetuated, uh, and I've seen the episodes of Supernatural too, guys, um, and love them all, but the concept of the vengeful spirit the idea that the longer a ghost remains in a in a space uh for example the more angry they become or the more dangerous they become and that makes for a great storyline but that's yeah uh, it is not reflective of reality no no i mean now there might be a particular case out there that for whatever you know that in that particular fact pattern it makes sense that that happens but mm -hmm. i'm not thinking of one off the top of my head i something that seems a lot more realistic is something that we've talked about a number of times which is <clears throat> if you're a really horrible person in life and you're stuck on the other side of the veil after death you're probably a pretty horrible person on that side too yeah um <clears throat> you're in life, you're in the afterlife Mm -hmm. yeah and um i i am again coming off of impressions but impressions that were much more in real time for me uh that that mrs ritchie very much is very present mm -hmm. with the house uh that the the upper porch portico is is her domain mm -hmm. and that she is a very intense person i uh that that certainly is that was my impression and and 
and also um, very similar to accounts of people who've lived in the house in the past of experiences that uh, intense, but not you know not in a bad way, uh, a yeah. force of nature. <laughs> yeah, uh, and a very strong person personality. Um, mm -hmm. But I think that, you know, it would, you know, that that makes sense, too, for the time and everything going on, um, that um, it would make you that way. It would. And I think it's, to me, it's an exceptional testimony <clears throat> just to the, you know, we, a lot of our, a lot of our pop culture references of settlement or settlers isn't so much within you know media right as as it is i would i would postulate as it is with uh <clears throat> largely state-sponsored art and statues about 1910 to 1940 yeah you know the <clears throat> the the settler family the 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 conestoga wagon the stalwart yeah. husband the 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 woman in the long dress holding the baby in her arms and the team of mules um uh, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah exquisitely framed um <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> and then thomas hart benton came along um and said, yes, I will do that theme, but not like you asked for it. That's um, right. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait for you to pay me first. <laughs> and then let me do my rendition. Oh, look, Jesse James is killing someone in the background. <laughs> um, uh, I, I love Ben. I love, absolutely love the, the art. It's phenomenal. Um, and of course, and, ironically, of course, he grew up in the ocean 50 miles away from Newtown. So that is appropriate on it really so is. Many oh, and another thing when, when you and another thing that popped in my head when you mentioned that and you know him painting jesse james um uh, there is an account um that um at the second newtonia battle that um general shelby got surrounded and uh, separated and basically separated from his command and um, uh, was, you know, demanded that he surrender and that uh, several horsemen rode in, they were partisans and uh, basically uh, saved him and they were part of Quantrell's men. And the story goes that the James boys were in that group and that's that is the reason that he interceded uh on uh frank james behalf when he was um uh, tried for the uh for the robberies and murders i love that i <clears throat> obviously we don't know for sure what happened but as far as i'm concerned that happened i i will totally sign off on that just because it was so <laughs> awesome uh and Oh, there's, there's a bunch of stuff I want to talk about on that. Um, I'll just real quickly fin finish my thought on the settlers. We have this sort of heavily removed, I won't say airbrushed because, you know, the art was done mid-century or prior. Right. But this, this very stately imagery of <clears throat> your, your white Anglo-Saxon Protestants uh marching into the west uh replete with cornbread and that <laughs> said that said you know some of this is is reflective of my impression of mrs ritchie some mm -hmm. of this is is reflective actually of the article i wrote for my forebearer mm -hmm. on on sunday yeah <clears throat> that of course first of all that these were just people these were <clears throat> people certainly with all of the same potentialities and all of the same flaws that we have. Um, but these are also people who, regardless of how you cut it, did something extraordinary. Really, I mean, certainly did. I mean, 
you know, when writing, you basically out into nowhere and say, okay, I'm going to build a house, you know. I know. I'm, I'm going to forge my life and we are going to create something that has never been here before. And we're going to do it <clears throat> realistically with the least amount of support system and 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 the and the fewest resources outside of natural resources but i mean in terms of resources like oh we're just gonna go to menards and buy what buy you know i'm just gonna stop by home depot and get that lumber um well you 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 know things like you made your own paint and things like that and and um i often tell the story of Kendrick House that the, re the reason you see pink floors pink paint on on so often in the 1800s is that they they used uh ox or horse blood as pig pigment yes and, <clears throat> and and certainly a case of Newtonia and I know is uh, Richie as well you know, the idea I mean and what I would just challenge people as they're listening and thinking about this <clears throat> challenge them on this you go, I mean, in the case of both locations, hundreds and hundreds of miles from quote unquote civilization, mm -hmm. <clears throat> you land, you go, oh, we need a house. <laughs> yeah. Guess what? Well, first of all, you got to cut down the trees. You got to hew the logs. You got to make the shingles. You've got make to do all this. And you and you build your temporary log cabin, mm -hmm. and then you go. But now we need to build the house. <laughs> well, first you need to make all the bricks. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, just the 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 simplest thing. I mean, I can't I can't make it through managing a farmer's market without running to Casey's. <laughs> You know, it just the men and women, and and I think that this is is such an extraordinary, and I think it's a very telling <clears throat> conversation to include is the men and women for them to survive. Have, first of all, had to be incredibly smart at what they were doing. Yeah, and second of all, had to be absolutely tough as nails. Or they would die, mm -hmm. and and the ones that were not strong enough did. Yeah, and that's one thing that we often don't think about that a lot of people didn't survive all that. Yes, and <clears throat> that I I just I I find it extraordinary, and there's a part of me that cannot help <clears throat> but see that in Mrs. Ritchie. Yeah. Oh, I, I think so. This this is a woman, you know, we, <clears throat> you know, oftentimes the, <clears throat> what I would classify as a contextual opining about the negativity of the past. Yeah. Um, I don't really care what century it is. I, I would not want to get on the wrong side of Mrs. Ritchie. <laughs> no, I, I. I, she, I, I think she could hold her own with pretty much anyone, and I'm not I, just, and I'm not, you know, saying as far as, you know, brawn, but just, just personality as, and will. Yes, as a, as a, as a admired and respected and and appropriately respected personality and a force of nature and a force of, of intelligence and <clears throat> I believe very strongly that she continues to watch over the house mm -hmm. I do too uh, I, I think she does so because she loves the house uh, she's very protective of the house mm -hmm. and she's also not somebody I mean she's a, she's a perfect Missourian because she doesn't just take somebody's word for it it's like you gotta show me yeah, that, you got that it. Really comes through. <laughs> you you got to prove it. Um, and it's uh, 
you know, I think that that's, <clears throat> I, I did sense less tension overall mm -hmm. than the last time that I was there in the home. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree. <clears throat> the, the last time I, the, the time prior, I guess it was last year. I keep, time gets away from me. Yeah, the, 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 the last event was last August. Yes. I I really got a sense of <clears throat> tension that was almost boarding on agitation. Annoyance. Yes. Yes. And and that seemed to diminish mm -hmm. generally. Uh, although I think it I, I I I could effectively use the word resignation. Um <laughs> <clears throat> I suppose you people are not going to get out of my house until midnight. Uh, <laughs> but if it's if it's good for the house, fine. And maybe that's maybe we all should also say uh, too that uh, the current caretaker has had experiences, um, things like the sounds of opening and closing doors, um, yes. uh, sound of what almost sounds like chains being. Um, <clears throat> your drag um yeah. and so um which probably is more residual is more imprinted but um but so there are just various things that happen i mean uh people in the past that live there have talked about having the experience of uh, bed covers being pulled off mm -hmm. the bed like a little kid pulling the blankets off um things like that so um but playful so there's just yeah. a lot of things there there really are and it's <clears throat> it's a beautiful home i for people who wonder what it looks like this is what it looks like mm -hmm. it, is, it is a beautiful federal home um let's uh and of course the family cemetery is immediately on the property Mm -hmm. and then and then the civil war cemetery is just up the road yeah and turn <laughs> into the block and go north <laughs> yes yes i i we were <clears throat> so we conducted the 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 rotating tours uh and presentations uh from eight until 11 uh-huh and then we wrap things up and visited and and my head's off to Jim, uh, Jim right now. He did just an incredible job, and I he was is. I was I was very honored to get to work with Jim through the Thank through the whole process. <clears throat> and then we headed up to the cemetery, basically for midnight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was about midnight when we got up there. Yeah, <laughs> and I got just a very interesting series of impressions with the cemetery um but overall i just i it felt very playful in a weird sort of way mm -hmm. um usually it's very watchful um yes and and you've experienced that before too um, in the middle of the afternoon yeah anytime um and um but the other night it, it did it seemed very much more playful and inviting yes yes mm -hmm. um i was gonna say i <clears throat> i felt very drawn in yeah i, I of course i i i feel that anytime i'm there even when it's a very watchful look uh feeling that you're being watched but um yeah it, it was one of those you know come on in and and uh, almost come in sit down and and, and sit a spell and talk kind of feeling <laughs> even though yeah it was yeah <clears throat> it was it was a space that i wanted to i wanted to get into and i, I guess i should clarify that it you know <clears throat> get out of the car walk up to the the gate Mm -hmm. I I made a, a specific purpose to pause for a moment and essentially 
say hello. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and do my best to <clears throat> respect the space, respect the threshold. I, I do believe that the, the Civil War Cemetery in Newtonia is very much a threshold space. It, that's the only way I know how to describe it. It, it, it. Every time I've been there over the years, it's, it's felt that way. Uh, it, it really is, you, you feel like you are walking into another entirely different space. You do. Um, I was a little disappointed that Blackie apparently had already gone to sleep or was just hunting elsewhere. Because <laughs> <clears throat> I kind of wanted to say hi. I can't believe I said that because I normally hate snakes, but I really like Blackie. Um, <laughs> it's and... a very large flat snake that stays in the cemetery that... Uh took a liking to josh <laughs> yes <clears throat> well what got me was that just the serenity of the snake itself i mean this mm -hmm. th this snake and this was this was 2020 but black yeah. snakes are long lived mm -hmm. and so you know unless something happened to blackie i i don't think that you know he should he still be around. or she job. i didn't yeah, specifically sure. inquire um no. the snake <clears throat> and for people who are unfamiliar black snakes are non-venomous they're constrictors that's right um, and they're good to have around yes uh because they do hunt rodents their presence also uh keeps venomous snakes away yes and so, <clears throat> so these are very positive um reptiles to have and you know and, and black snakes have a pretty easygoing personality as a general rule but this one really struck me as particularly not just easygoing um but just a little sure. like honey badger just <laughs> just just like this is my realm this is my tree mm -hmm. nice that you're here really don't care yeah um no fear mm -mm. and 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 no agitation um yeah. never sped up never slithered away didn't approach yeah uh and it, there's a there's a incredible red cedar <clears throat> that's very very old and chunks of it have broken apart and there's a lot of crevices within it Mm -hmm. and the last time i saw blackie it was moving into the tree yeah <laughs> <laughs> sedately and, and again i hate snake i mean like snakes are terrifying to me that is that <laughs> is just across the board with a few exceptions and this one i'm just going okay you're the king um yeah this cemetery and i respect that so i hope blackie's okay um there there was a playfulness and a calling that would be my calling us in calling us to to take in the space and mm -hmm. to not ignore the dead exactly and, and, and again, you know, as, as when we were talking about Beetlejuice, the, the, the line, the living off it, ignore the dead. I think yeah. that's, that's the thing is don't. Yes. And, yes. and it's okay not to. And yeah. And, and respect. I, I would encourage, I would strongly encourage people to replace fear with respect. Yeah. I, uh, I, I think, it, I, I think if you're interested in the paranormal you'll you'll get a lot further uh doing that if you are frightened of the paranormal um which of course is understandable it's mm -hmm. you know it's it's sentient activity that we cannot typically see right um i i can tell you that it's it's going to bring you <clears throat> that little bit of shift of perspective is going to bring you an enormous amount of peace of mind. Mm -hmm. it's, I think that's fair. it's uh really <clears throat> and and you know i was i was I was relaying to someone this afternoon 
<clears throat> what my Saturday night looked like. And, you know, I concluded with, uh, you know, midnight in a haunted civil war cemetery. And, <laughs> and they're like, nope, not going to do it. Uh, and I, and I respect that. And I don't say this necessarily with pride, but I, I do say it uh, with appreciation that midnight in an active civil war cemetery felt very normal to me me too <laughs> <laughs> and you know there again i think it's important to note there are locations <clears throat> they are comparatively rare but there are locations that whatever energy is there may genuinely not want you there for whatever that's reason true. That, and, that's true and and in a, in a few instances it's important that if you if you get that impression it is it is best to respect move out that. of that space yeah respect it and move out of the space um i find it interesting that a lot of a lot of the activity just is more curious yeah well, they're, they're like us. Yeah, and 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 I think that's what a lot of what we were getting in terms of the the more technical side of the investigation yeah. on Saturday. Oh, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, that's how it came <coughs> from. So, and maybe Very, that's a spot for us to to end tonight. I like that. I like that. We. Uh, <laughs> oh, I two two years and a little bit of change i remember a collective discussion of are we going to have enough material for 12 episodes <laughs> some days we come up with enough material for 12 episodes i <laughs> know <laughs> i don't know I, we didn't specifically count i think we're, we're between what probably around 108 and 112 episodes at this point somewhere uh, somewhere along that line yeah yeah and uh i don't know about everybody else but i think you know as far as what we have to to come up with we're just getting started yeah <laughs> yeah what we haven't talked about is a taller stack than what we have I, I and it keeps growing um i can't wait to start talking about joe shelby yeah <clears throat> a very a very interesting um character in the dark ozarks that um is a can be controversial but is, is a very complicated person that may, is very interesting very very interesting and and even just and we'll we'll do this in a, on a later episode but just the the larger context and and uh uh significance of the battles of newtonia yes which had considerable impact on the war and it's happening in this tiny location yeah it's it it, it it's humbling when you think about it it is it really is it's uh, and it's all part of our history and uh, i i love it so yeah i think that's a <clears throat> great place to conclude um we'll be back please like share follow subscribe all of those things that one does in social media land <laughs> yes <laughs> and uh anticipate us being back of course we'll be back next wednesday but with uh a completely different um a pro, you know uh uh conversation yes definitely and we'll leave it at that. Absolutely. Teasers. <laughs> Night all. Night, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Alex. Thanks, Chuck. Thanks, everyone.